All right, let's do a podcast, yeah? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 253 of Opinions May Vary. I am your host, JR, my co-host with me, Alex. Hello! And it's it's a good old justice. It's a, it's a just us. Mm-hmm. Just us. You know, there are... I was going to get political, but I'm not going to do it. Cause it's, no, no, everyone wants to hear more political stuff right now at yep. this very moment. Yep. <clears throat> and they, everyone knows that this is the place to get it. It's yep. right here at Opinions May Vary. Essentially, we applaud the hundreds of thousands of women who are marching for their rights today while we sit here and record a podcast. I also want to applaud the efforts of Senator Trask for passing that Mutant Registration Act <laughs> and making those filthy muties have to sign up and register their powers. It's very, it's very important. It is. <clears throat> Which leads into the Superhero Registration Act. <laughs> Remember when they did that? And the mutants get to say, hey, how come you're fighting this, but you did nothing when we had to get signed, Cap? Huh? Hmm? Huh? Hmm? That's a, that's a good point. That's about political as we're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. We'll, we'll get comic political. <laughs> like, like when a convention no longer accepts credit cards <laughs> to vend or participate in their convention or whatever it is. Yep. But... um. I want to have like an old school. I want to go old school today, mm-hmm. like like an old school OMV episode where we just talk about s- personal opinions and and different things in comic books, and then hope that people listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to talk Which about, listeners are free to agree or disagree with us, absolutely, and let us know, absolutely, in, in some comments. They can also buy a pin. <laughs> <laughs> that too you can buy pins too they're only five dollars for the record most people charge like 15 for pins oh, yeah. we're yeah. charging five yep five dollars let's get a pen they're really neat show your pride they're like the hot new item like the hot the the, the hot thing nowadays is is pins enamel pins it is. people go bonkers for pins like when we talk with jeff from penny arcade like penny arcade mm-hmm. is blowing up and like now, last last week's guest, Jamie last Noguchi. Week, Jamie Noguchi, looking at his site, I was like, fuck, I have to buy his <laughs> pins now. <laughs> pins are like, and I don't even display mine. Like, I display mine, but not like on a bag, like mm-hmm. like yourself. Yeah. I have mine in a in a mounted <clears throat> box in my office that my wife made me. Because <laughs> I'm a loser. If you ever catch us at a convention or a show or wherever, and I have a yellow Heroclix bag, it's all there's... It might look like there's no pins on it. <laughs> Oh, it's a messenger bag. I open the flap, and there's at least six pounds of pins on that. Good thing. God! So many. I can't believe you you don't lose them. <laughs> I had one pin on my backpack, and I mm. lost it. I and may it was have like lost the one pin that I never wanted to lose. I may have lost one or two. It's like there's a side that's like all the pins I'm gonna keep that aren't going anywhere, and some of those are actually glued in. Mm-hmm. So like the pin back is like is super glued. So because I'm not going to trade or anything, but then there's like the other side is tradable stuff or sellable, whichever you know. Make an offer. <laughs> <clears throat> so I wanted to talk, like a, like I mentioned, I wanted to do like a classic, like a throwback mm-hmm. almost mm-hmm. to like the glory days, the old the old glory days of OMV when we just talked about nothing. But I wanted to talk about like different characters, different things in comic book. And in, in in reference to those characters, I want to talk about like underrated overhyped stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, cause initially I just wanted to talk, yo, cause you had sent me an article and I was like, Oh, Hey, I really like that character. And I feel they're very underrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about underrated characters. Now I want to just like set up, set a, not a precedent, but like, in, in in your opinion, what makes a character underrated? Because for me, it's essentially, I really like this character, and I never hear anyone talk about them. And like, they might show up once every five years in comic books. <laughs> um, maybe not, you know, some characters are, are that infrequent, but others, it's like, they might show up once a year. Or they're in a background and like don't get any lines, yeah. Or, you know, or they'll be mentioned in passing, or there'll be like a comedy panel, like where they <laughs> reference them and they're a punchline, yeah, yeah, or something like that. You know, like what what to you makes makes a character underrated? 
because I think we have vastly different opinions on. There's also, you mentioned before we started, was like when you like a character so much and you go to an artist at a convention to get a sketch of them <laughs> and you say, can you draw so-and-so? And they go, who? Do you have any, do you have any reference? And then you have her, you get the sketch and you bring it home and like you might frame it or something and your friends who are also geeks come over and they come over and they see it and they go, who's that? Is that? Uh... Then you have to explain it. <laughs> and then like you, you get really excited about it, but they don't quite get it. <laughs> You're like, okay, all right. So have they fought Superman? <laughs> but so, so what makes underrated? What, what makes some, someone underrated to you? Can you put a definition to it? It's for me. It's it's a lot of a gut thing. It's. I'll get into it more later, but there's so often an issue of um, one writer or like a set of creators will know exactly what to do with a character, and they'll make this character amazing, but they're only in the book for like three issues, and then time goes by, and the same character shows up in a different book, maybe a different storyline but it's a different creative team and they just essentially make them a laughing stock. And you go, Oh, Oh, come on. Yep. They, they deserve more than that. <clears throat> and you, you want to see the amazing mega badass version. Cause like, it's like you're rooting for, for the underdog. You, they have it in them. They could, they could lead a book. Maybe, you know, depending on, are we, <laughs> are we thinking of the same, same character? <clears throat> Is there someone I, you had specifically in mind? Because um, I have a I have a shining example of that. For, for this example, um, it's actually from the Spider Man universe. Not not the example I had in mind. Okay, <laughs> this example, um, it, it, it's part Spider Man and part like Punisher, because there was like a bunch of thugs Punisher was gonna go kill, and they were all like weenies, and um, and I forget how long ago this was, but. Uh, the shocker was going to show up Mm -hmm. and all these dudes who were like common thugs, they don't really have a good gimmick or they don't really have good powers or their tech is still like not as awesome. And the shocker shows up and is like, and they're all like, Oh man, this dude's old school. Like this, he's an OG. Like he, he, you got to respect him or he'll kill you. Like he, this dude's the shit. He's amazing. With electricity. (laughs) Yeah. He's, he wears this weird outfit and makes fist blasters and, and so, like, and we're talking about the shocker, not electro. N- correct. The yeah. shocker's the orange one. Yeah, with with yeah, with the like cruel, it, the cruelty pattern. Yeah, yeah, yep. The lines. <laughs> yeah, him. So, like, there was a couple issues where there was like really common thugs who were trying to get in the supervillain game, and like they looked up to this dude. Are you referencing the Legion of Losers? I don't think so. Spider Man. Because, like, growing up, I had, like, four issues of Spider-Man that I got for Easter that I read, like, over and over and over and over and over uh-huh. again. And one of the issues was Legion. It was, like, the spot. He, he would be. And uh, and I think the Shocker was, like, in with that. I can't remember. I, I would have just had my mind blown if that was the storyline, though. <laughs> no, Anyways, it was. Continue. It wasn't that long ago. <laughs> um, But, you know, it did a good job because how long has the Shocker been around, you know? He he's got at least thirty forty years right in you know of being a printed character, if not more than that, <clears throat> and so, and then like um, uh, what was it called? This is this the Superior Foes of Spider Man, mm-hmm. which was like more of a comedy book with Steve Lieber, and like he Shocker was made to be a goofball. He was like a clumsy oaf who like would drop water on himself and electrocute himself. Oh, whoop de doo. And it's like, oh no, he now he's Homer Simpson. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I didn't want him to be Homer Simpson. I wanted to be a cool badass that deserves some respect. I have a because, like, to an extent, anyone like within like the criminal underground kind of thing, anyone who can like hold their own against you know the legend that is Spider Man like deserves a you know a certain amount of of awe. And everyone gets beat eventually, but. So the ones who can like really, who could put in a battle, <clears throat> but yep. Remember, I have a, uh, and we're getting we're, we haven't even touched on the underrated characters yet, but and this falls into my characters I want to see more of that we're talk we'll talk about later on. But it's a it's a perfect example of what you're just talking about. Like mm-hmm. they show up, and they're so hardcore, and they're so amazing. And then they just gradually turn into just a, an idiot, and like they're just a laughing stock, or they're the butt of the joke. 
Uh-huh. Um, and it's one of my favorite characters mm. uh, with Larflees. Yeah. Like, he showed he, up. He was on my list, too. <laughs> he was just so bad. It was, like, terrifying. Yeah. He, his his constructs would kill you, mm-hmm. and then you he would essentially just absorb, like, you're, you're not necessarily your soul, but, like, you were his. Mm-hmm. And, like, he was terrifying. Mm-hmm. Coming into Blackest Night and stuff, he, he scared. He was he was great. He was awesome. Like he just he would kill people. He just wanted their shit. And it's like one of the most base emotions that people actually have, just being greedy, just wanting. Yep. Yeah. I love the fact that I think one of the coolest plot points ever written is the fact that there's only one. Orange oh my god! Lantern. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're we're so used to there being like this legion, this army of Green mm-hmm. Lanterns, and then like oh, well, Sinestro has an entire core, you know. Yep. There's to a, there's like six thousand or whatever of each of them, you know. They die and have to get new ones, but um, yeah, they think there's so many, and then like all the Red Lanterns started showing up, and there's a bunch of those, and then it's like whoa, now there's orange. It's like well, how many? Oh, it's just one. It's just the one, and like, <laughs> just like the whole, like, there's all the all the rings are there, mm-hmm. but they won't seek out anything. Mm-hmm. Like he, the, I love, like, Jeff Johns just did a. I don't. I, I believe Jeff Johns created Larflees. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but it, it's so good. I love that character from like Prelude to Blackest Night into Blackest Night, but mm-hmm. then like after like New Fifty Two Larflees, like just. When he just had, like, the, his miniseries? Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. It was just a bad book, and it was a bummer. It's not like... I'm not... We're not, like, mocking the book. It was no. just... It wasn't a well, good book. Yeah, it wasn't good. Because they threw in, like, like an extra character to try and be, like, the straight man to the comic relief. Yeah. Because, like, Lara Fleece is so ridiculous. He's yeah. so greedy. Whoa. Let's make a joke about it. And then he had to have, like, some... Like, a, I guess, like, an advisor... To be like, Mr. Fleas, we shouldn't do that. Oh, the the guardian that he won? Yeah, whatever that... Say, Saeed? Is that... No, no, no. In his mini, it was someone else. Oh, was it? Yeah. There was a different character. It wasn't, well, like, one of the guardians. Uh, no. Oh, yeah. I think <clears throat> I recall it. He's making an appearance again in... Um, is it Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps? Yeah. 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 And, like, it's okay. Like, he, you know, he has one of the Brainiacs with him and... Hmm. um. He's just collecting stuff, but, like, I feel like they just turn him into, like, a blithering idiot who just wants to collect <laughs> stuff, whereas, like... He's not scary anymore. Yeah. He was yeah. scary. Yeah. Um, his Christmas special was fantastic. Way back in the day. Yeah. I have that. Yeah. Yep, the Larfley's Christmas special. Because, like, that was the exactly correct way to do, like, a comic relief book. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Between his interactions with Hal and like even like the extra stuff that was in the pages. So there was a page that was like a little crafty do it yourself thing. If like you could make your own Larfleas Christmas tree ornament and like you just cut out this this ornament and then glue it together. And so where you would cut it out, there was like little flaps to glue this paper pages together. Mm-hmm. And in the instructions on that little flap, it just said, I want glue. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how you would make the ornament. That's brilliant. <clears throat> So, anyways, get let's get to underrated characters. In our humble opinions, let's let's discuss underrated comic book characters, and this goes across any mm-hmm. any universe. I don't even I don't care. It doesn't have to be big two. Should one of us just start? Yeah. I mean, the thing that kind of launched this for me, and I've mentioned it I mentioned him in the past, but mm-hmm. you sent me the article is um is Max Lord. I love Maxwell Lord. He was like I way back and I believe this was during the show when Justice League no um yeah Justice League Generations Lost or whatever it was called I think mm-hmm. it was during Brightest Day yeah I think we were doing the show then I can't remember but like Maxwell Lord was like the main antagonist and like I remember like he made the whole world forget about him mm-hmm. like just that gnarly like mind wipe that he did just <laughs> spewing blood everywhere <laughs> love it Love that character. Like, he popped up randomly in an issue of Justice League last month. Like, his face big on the cover and shit. Mm-hmm. And, like, I... And there's... I, I I think I mentioned it two weeks ago. Like, just, it's... You always see the static panels. Mm-hmm. 
like of his face and he's talking and then the last one he's always has a nosebleed yeah every time gets me i was like you, you can just you can you can milk that for all it's worth and i'll read it <laughs> but he's not like a well recognized character yeah um because if you just show his face there's nothing defining about his face he's just That'll a dude separate him from everyone else <laughs> like there's not really a costume like sometimes he's wearing his like wind- his holster <clears throat> like his his spy gear yeah 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 I forgot how how to, because sometimes he's like in his three piece suit, yeah. Or sometimes he's in his his spy thing, uh, like black gloves. <laughs> when he, because that he got that like from when he was in Checkmate. Yep. When he just took over Checkmate. <laughs> Which I, I don't think that would be like Shield, because they're not necessarily always good. Right. They're a spy organization. Yeah. They they do spy stuff. Yeah. And like it's 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 a whole like chess theme. So there's like white kings and queens and black kings and queens, yep. and, and it goes all the way to like down upon. They they yeah. mentioned it in that Justice League book. Like it was Amanda Waller like grilling him, and she's like, you know, started out as a pawn. Yeah, she made, was checkmate too. I forgot about that. Yeah, made your way all the way, made your way up to whatever who I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But I'm a big, I, I like Max Lord. Bought his first appearance way overpriced at a convention <laughs> last year. I don't even care. It's worth, like, cover price. I bought it for, like, 20 bucks. Which I don't think the Hellfire Club goes down that far. The Marvel's right. the Hellfire Club like with Sebastian Shaw. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have, like, the Kings and Queens, but I don't think they have, like, pawn or knights or, or bishops or anything. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Anyway. What do you got? Who's over? Who's underrated? In your I was opinion? still trying to think if I have any more on Maxwell Lord. Remember when, remember when they killed him? <laughs> yeah. That was... Just no. snapped his neck. Well, Brutal. She, she had to. Brutal. Well, like... That's what makes her different from Batman and Superman. She's so, a warrior. I'm talking about Wonder Woman, by the way. Would you argue that... Isn't that the exact same thing that happened in Man of Steel? I think she definitely... The problem is the Man of Steel was a bad movie. So. <laughs> Fair. All right, I'll accept that answer. <laughs> Blindly. Like, she didn't have as much of, like, the the resistance to killing someone. Right. Um, whereas Superman's supposed to have that, but we never really saw it. We didn't really get it. It's like, yeah, maybe you should kill him. You know, along with maybe letting those bus load of kids drown. Just maybe you should have. So it's just, and it was the only way. Like, <laughs> she had him in the lasso. Mm-hmm. She's like, "How do I stop Superman from killing literally everyone?" No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, "Kill me." Uh-huh. It's the only way. <clears throat> it wasn't like, "Well, let's negotiate." It was, <laughs> "You have to kill me," and he was in the lasso of truth. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew this, Alex, but when you're in the lasso of truth, you have to tell the truth. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's as if the guy that created Wonder Woman. Also created the lie detector test. It's weird. Didn't know that. Yeah, it's true. By the way, I'm not just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> who's over, who's underrated to you? Um, I'm gonna throw out Iceman. Really? Yeah. Bobby. Yeah. Bobby last name Drake. Bobby Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I only know his name because of the movie, the movies. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I was saying about Shocker. Iceman is one of the original X Men. He's on the cover, like of the in, first one. In like in the nineteen sixties. Yeah. Well, he, he was still snow back then. Oh, yeah. He didn't right. look like ice. Um but I think he was still called Ice. He wasn't called Snowman. <laughs> It'd be a weird name. But he's never really been trusted to lead a team. He's never like stepped up and taken that leadership role. He's always kind of been like <laughs> Bobby. Like, he's always the one being scolded by, by Cyclops or someone or anyone else, you know, as if anyone else is the sitcom dad, Iceman is like the teenage son that messes up or like the crazy uncle who, you know, shouldn't have bought that Corvette. Classic Bobby. <laughs> Did you eat all the cookies before the bake sale? Bobby. <clears throat> and so, like, he's never really had a solo book. No one's tried to write that for him. Um, he's gotten like a few 
times where he may have had like a bigger plot point than other characters when the story arc um he's had like a single when they changed his, or they they announced his sexuality yeah yeah but even then like it was more about the rest of the team yeah and like well Jean gray wasn't being old Jean gray she was being new Jean gray um he's had like an origin issue which was which was pretty good uh but i don't think he's gotten the, the enough uh what it deserves enough attention I mean everyone else gets their own book yeah has no I don't think Beast has gotten his own book that's like a that's a problem I feel like a Beast book in the right hands could be fantastic yeah yeah I mean I guess you could make the argument that any book in the right hands would be fantastic (laughs) but like I would read a Beast book I would I would probably read an Iceman book Mm mhm I was a kid I loved Iceman Mm mhm he could make ice. I, th- I was explaining to someone um, the new angel, or young angel, I guess. Right. And because I was talking about X-23, and I think that... Did you see the new trailer? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Poppin' Claws will always <laughs> get me. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm a sucker. All New Wolverine was my pick for Book of the Year. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I forgot to mention, I like, is one of those parts where it throws some backstory in and, like, there's some humor, but it doesn't have to explain all of it because if you want to find out, you could research it yourself. Right. The thing I didn't mention on that episode was there's a point where these, like, robbers break into Laura's apartment. But, like, the alternate universe, Old Man Logan was there and Laura was there and then Gabby was there and she's, like, a young mercenary thing. And so these two dudes are, like, just coming to the window and they're like, hey... You're wrong. I'll give you like 30 seconds to leave, but (laughs) we're just going to be really bad. And that old man Logan was like, leave your window unlocked. And she just goes, my boyfriend could fly. (laughs) Like, really matter of fact, (laughs) because it's Angel. Right. And it's like, she'd have to say like, oh, Angel from the new X-Men or the young X-Men who Beast pulled for. You know, none of that was explained. It was just, if you want to find it out, you can. But, like, my boyfriend could fly, and that was the end of the issue. <laughs> it wasn't like, it's not like old comics where it would be a paragraph. Or, like, an asterisk saying, yeah. see more in uh, issue number seven, or whatever. Yeah. Remember when comics used to, like, old Spider Man, like McFarlane Spider Man? Mm-hmm. You know, every issue has to summarize the plot <laughs> at the beginning of the issue. You know, gee whiz. And it was like the first three pages of, I can't believe Craven almost got me that time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. MJ's going to be so mad that when I was walking down the street <laughs> in the last issue. Which I believe it's it was Bendis that was like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to write three pages of Spider-Man swinging through the city explaining what the last issue was or last story arc was. So that's when he started putting like, the one like contents page and like here's the characters here's a paragraph read an actual paragraph it'll save me two pages of web swing through the city i love that they they do it in a lot of marvel books Mm -hmm. like if not all of them the ones that i read like thor and inhumans and and stuff like that like Mm -hmm. there's pretty much always like a synopsis page like i really like when books do that even yeah. if it's just like like walking dead does like one sentence mm-hmm. last time this happened oh right that's true because people like me who like i'll read a book and then 20 minutes later i'll be like <laughs> how did that end <laughs> i'm not even joking i've had to like sometimes when i'm bagging and boarding my books i'll just take a peek at the last page just to remind myself how it ended right yeah where's this character oh right there they left they went yep. somewhere else yeah <clears throat> so ice man who's who you got um, I, another character we were discussing pre-show was, was Heimdall. Okay. I, especially like in the movies cause Idris Elba plays him mm-hmm. and I love Idris Elba, but like his character is just so, I mean, I've, I haven't read a lot of Thor. I've been reading the new Thor and that's it. Um, so I don't know if he, if he's a big character, like early on, I keep meaning to message Will and be like, Hey, Will, what, <laughs> what Thor should I read? Will knows a lot about Thor's. Yep. Um, I personally think that character is rad. Just because, like, he's, like, you know, the sentry. He just watches shit. But, like, he can well, be really badass when he needs to be. Right, but I feel he's not always presented with that opportunity. Because he's, like, he's almost forced to be kind of stagnant. Mm-hmm. By, like, well, you stand there and watch. <laughs> Does he go on any adventures? No. He just kind of stands there and watches. <laughs> well, what's he do? He kind of guards. 
but you know, it's, it's, he stays at the Rainbow Bridge. Provides sage <laughs> advice when the story complements the, <laughs> or when the story requires it. I think he's a rad character, though. I wouldn't mind seeing, like, I mean, I guess you really couldn't do a Heimdall book. Maybe like an origin. Mm-hmm. Well, I would, I'd read the shit out of that. Growing something, up, how do you deal with being able to see everything? <laughs> something <laughs> drastic would have to happen. But I think it, it could work. There was um, there's a series from DC about uh, Shazam. And uh, something happened to Wizard Shazam, and he died or something. So Captain Marvel Shazam had to take his place, which means there had to be a new Captain Marvel. Right. And so they got... Uh, Captain Marvel Jr. to step up and become Captain Marvel. But he had to go through all these trials, and so he had to take the place of, like, all these other gods from that myth <clears throat> and, like, get their approval. And so he had to become Atlas for a while. And, that like, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and so that version of Atlas, like, controls... Was this Trials of Shazam? I think so. Did you read that? I read the first volume of it. Okay. Because I think there was two volumes. Um, well, like a one through six and a six through twelve. I think I had the fr- like, like twelve issues. So. I think so, and I think yeah. I bought the first issue or something like that, uh-huh. like in a in a back issue box, because at the time I had Red Kingdom come and I loved Shazam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was hunting for Shazam books, and I found mm-hmm. that, and then like working at the bookstore, I found one of the trades for it, mm-hmm. and I, I flipped through most of it, but it I, for, it sounded familiar. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, so, continue. I, if it wasn't in like the first volume, it was yeah. Duh, it was in the second. Anyway, <laughs> um, so like. Alice isn't physically holding the world. He's like locked into this giant machine computer thing that observes everything and he has to keep the world from collapsing. And so there's a lot of different things that go into it. It's like, well, I have to lower the temperature by this particular spot in the ocean by two degrees or else I'll cause a tsunami, which will wipe out uh, 200,000 lives. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of stuff like that of like, well, I'll do this. So I stop an earthquake and I'll do this. So I prevent a forest fire. And I, and there's a lot of like little things like that, that this, you know, God essentially has to observe the entire world. <clears throat> and so I don't remember Captain Marvel Jr.'s name, but he steps in the machine to give Atlas a rest. I think he has to find a new Atlas or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's in the machine for a while. And like, he's almost like about to die. <laughs> <laughs> like the stress that it takes or have a seizure or something. When Shazam Captain Marvel shows up. Freddie Freeman. That yeah, that's it. <laughs> what's that what's that called when Peter Parker, Bruce Banner, Reed Richards? Alliteration? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Both companies Billy Batson. Both companies did a lot of alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. So Billy Batson Shazam shows up and like rescues him and takes over as Alice for a while. And Freeman was like, Oh my god, how long was I in there for? <laughs> like seven days? <laughs> it was like Oh, it was like five minutes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> but how do we get there? Who, oh, Heimdall. Mm-hmm. So that's almost like, you know, he has to watch or else it has to find a replacement. Right. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of trouble. I mean, there is the Watcher. But the the Watcher is more like he just catalogs, whereas Heimdall yeah. just, he he keeps like, he's a sentry. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I was telling, read the latest issue of Thor. I can't get over that book. It's so good. That book is so good. I get so happy. So which one is out. is this now? Which one is what? Thor book? Because isn't there a Thor oh, the Unworthy as well? Well, yeah, there's Unworthy Thor, uh-huh. which follows old Thor, okay. or, as they call it, the Odin son now. Yeah. Um, and then there's Thor, the, like the mighty Thor, which follows Jane Foster mm-hmm. um, on her adventures dealing with Malaketh. Malaketh? Yeah, Malaketh. Yeah, Mal- yeah, him. Because um, he's a dick. <laughs> yes. He's a, he, he's, a he's, he's such a dick. <laughs> For a time, he was just walking around with with Odinson's arm just hanging around his neck because <laughs> he cut it off, and that was like his trophy. So does Thor have uh, the destroyer arm now? Or? He has, I don't know, it's just like metal arm. Okay. I don't know what type of, I probably should pay attention, but <laughs> they still haven't showed what. Because one of the books that takes place in the future, Thor has destroyer's arm right. as his arm. I mean that's rad. It's amazing. It's kind of like it's like a it's like Trigun. Yeah. Cuz Legato has Vash's arm on him. Oh, is that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The good old the good old days of <laughs> anime. I mean like how is that possible? But anyways, do you have anyone else? I've got a couple. Uh I always want to see more Cassandra Kane Bad Girl. Mm-hmm. Or Black Bad as she's called now. They shipped her off to Japan, I think. 
to do the Bat International. What do they call it? Batman Inc. Batman Inc. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because <clears throat> like I, I really liked how she was handled while she was Batgirl, and um, we met that cosplayer at New York Comic Con. <laughs> Yeah, she was rad. Who's a really cool Cassandra Kane Batman. And, like, no one uses her full name anymore. And, uh, like, recently after New York and for a while afterwards on uh, on the Sketch Prices Facebook page, a lot of people were sharing their Cass Kane sketches. And I was like, oh, good. There's more fans of Cassandra Kane. There's, you know, but they all call her Cass Kane. <clears throat> they didn't call her Batgirl or Black Bat or anything. Right, right. But, like, I would really like to see more of her anywhere. <laughs> I think that would be great. Because <clears throat> she was also in um, Justice League Elite, mm-hmm. my favorite Justice League book. But again, it's one of those books that people go, what's that? Never heard of it. Huh? Um, Baron Zemo. I would like to see more of him. But because he's one of those bad guys that skates in line of maybe he's a good guy. Right. Because he's the one that made the Thunderbolts. And I'm a big fan of the Thunderbolts. In case... No one's been listening ever. ever. <clears throat> um, doing the villain thing and fighting Captain America, and, like being like a worthy bad guy to Captain America. I was just gonna mention that it's not easy to be a Captain America villain, <laughs> right? Because what you were gonna beat Captain America? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's really not gonna happen. <laughs> there was a book that followed like Captain America versus the the Serpent Society. And it's like one cap versus all society. And I was like, oh, come on. It's not even a contest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, there's one, like, there's a lot of things that get me that I love in comics. And when people write badass Captain America stories, mm-hmm. that'll always get me too. Like um, the pages that you have where he's cracking his knuckles and stuff. And yeah. Fighting War Machine, War Machine. Ultimate War Machine. Yeah. I almost called him Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was an Iron Maiden in the Ultimate Universe. Of course there was. I knew that. I was well aware of that. <laughs> um, but even when he's when he's trying to hide his uh, when he's Baron Zemo when he pretends to be a Citizen V, and like they made Citizen V be a whole thing. Is the V short for Vaughn? Like no, Baron Von no, Zemo? No, it's, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> Inside jokes on the show. <laughs> um, and uh, Doc Samson. Who's a uh, who's a guy that hangs out and or fights the Hulk because he's also gamma radiated, right? But he doesn't turn green, but he's still super strong. But he's also like a really smart psychologist and psychotherapist. And so one of the things he would do is like he'd be fighting the Hulk and like punching him, but also being like, "How is your relationship with your mother? How does that make you feel?" <laughs> <laughs> and he brings like a level of intelligence to the Hulk family. That is usually reserved for bad guys, like a leader or Mm -hmm. Modoc or something. Right. Like, he he might not be a creator or a a maker, you know, like a Tony Stark or anything. But I miss what he used to be able to do. Because he's he's dead now. Last we know. Before Battle World. I don't don't know if that's changed. Remember Battle World? (laughs) When Battle World and... um... Whatever the DC one was, Convergence? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah. Remember Convergence? Nope. Yeah, me neither because I didn't read, read it. it. <laughs> uh, I've also got Machine Man, but I, I could skip my reasons why. A lot of it goes into Next Wave. Me and Brett, everyone should read Next Wave. <laughs> and uh, and there was a case made for Jubilee. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Ultimate Universe, Ultimate Bishop was like running the X-Team for a while. And he was like, Jubilee, so... You make tiny explosions. She's like, well, they're fireworks. So, yeah. He's like, yeah, but they're still explosions. You ever try to make a really big one? <laughs> She's like, huh? He's like, Let's, we'll try some time. Not here, because it's not safe. But, you know, I've in like, he, he was from the future, so he might know a future Jubilee who can make insanely huge explosions mm-hmm. and be really, really dangerous. But she's always been relegated to, like, yeah, fireworks. So he's giving her a jump start. Yeah. Yeah. But then uh, everyone dies. So, okay. Yeah. So that that storyline, it's one of those comic book things where it's like a, a plot thread might get kickstarted, and then the next group of writers comes in and goes, nah, we're not doing that. I don't want to do that. We're just going to step on it. 
which it's dead now. Love it. <laughs> I love comic books. <laughs> which I think cur- current universe Julie is a vampire now. So yeah, that was the way it was in Old Man Logan. <laughs> Because that's one of the few Marvel books that I'm reading. But in Old Man Logan, they just uh, went and took on uh, Alucard. <laughs> Jubilee was with them, and all the vampires were going crazy and stuff. Yep. They're with um, Howling Commandos, I believe. No. Hmm. Who? It's like that weird team with like Man Thing. Is that Howling Commandos? The Monster Society. No. I don't know. Strike. Anyone. No, I can't remember. I don't read a lot of Marvel is my excuse. I also had <laughs> pretty much all of the Inhumans because I love the Inhumans right now. Yeah, I'm, but they they all have their own book now. I know, but like, I feel <laughs> like just based off my own experience, okay. a year ago I hadn't read any Inhumans. Right. <laughs> and now all I want is more Inhumans. I also had Mogo. I love Mogo. I love when Mogo is part of the story. <laughs> yeah. I like when Mogo... I mean, you know, it's also a character development point where that Mogo... Uh, what's the word? Mogo... It's not Mogo doesn't talk. It's like Mogo reserves herself. Doesn't socialize? Is that what it was? I don't know. Wasn't there like a slogan? It's like Mogo doesn't socialize? I can't remember. <laughs> but I love Mogo. Um, I mean, she was the savior for like Blackest Night. Yeah, like she sucked she them all saved in. Saved a lot of things. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, Soranic Natu, Sor Soran. Soranic. Yep. Yeah. Sinestro's daughter. Yeah. She's a badass. I wouldn't mind more of her everywhere. Have you not been reading Sinestro? The actual Sinestro book. Yeah. No. She's in that a lot. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, well, like, Sister, like, forced her to hang out with him more often. Right, and she's, right now she's, like, leader of the Yellow Lanterns. Yeah. Um, in the Green Lantern book, which I think is rad. Yeah. But, like, I dig her, like, because she's, like, the, she's, she essentially brought Hal back, um, because, remember, they killed Hal again for, like, five issues, because, <laughs> you know, like Max Landis says, death is dead in, in comics, like, they killed death. Yeah. Um, my last one, just one, just one thrown out there. Powerplex, I like Powerplex <laughs> a lot. I'm a big fan of Powerplex, even though like he's a he's a B character. I can't be upset that like he's not around more. But like, I dug his story. I dug his character because mm-hmm. like he would seem rational at one moment, and then the next moment he just explode. Yeah, and then like he could fuck up too. He'd make make mistakes <laughs> and kill people. Underrated characters. I told you, you should have bought more pages of him. I should have bought more pages. <laughs> I only have the one. Technically, I have I have the one page, and then I have a sketch cover with Powerplex on it. Hmm. Which even like that, like you mentioned earlier, like when I asked Ryan Alley, I was like, hey, can you draw Powerplex? He's like, yeah, sure. And he's like, do you do you have a picture of him? <laughs> like, he's like, I can't remember what I did for the ears. And like Zeta pulled it up, and like it's because he doesn't have ears. His costume covers his oh, right. ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We all had a laugh <laughs> when we were hanging out with Ryan Ollie. You drew this character for how many issues was he in? He was in like three or four, maybe, if that. Because he showed up, Invincible beat him, mm-hmm. and then he was in prison, but like someone smacked him. Yeah. Remember that? He was like all chained up, and yeah, then yeah. someone like smacked him in the face, yeah. which gave him like just enough power to break out, which I thought was a rad, like, a rad plot point. There was... Someone wrote a thing on trying to get a sketch from, uh, I think it was Greg Land, maybe. Oh, yeah. Someone went to Greg Land was like, hey, can you draw me Arwen from uh, the CrossGen books? This series, I believe, titled Arwen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he needed to look at reference. And the person was like, you you drew this book for 40 issues. <laughs> for, <laughs> at least 200 times you drew this character. And you don't remember what she looked like. <laughs> <laughs> but shall, shall we move on? Yeah. Let's let's go to uh, overhyped. So first we're talking underrated. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to go to overhyped. Now this might, this again, this is just opinion. <laughs> um, red Tornado. Okay. Way too much Red Tornado. There's not very much right now. It's still too much. <laughs> he was on like season one of Supergirl and looked ridiculous. I mean, he's a he's a robot that spins. Yeah, he makes wind things happen. Yep. He, 
there's times where he's like crit integral points of like Justice League books, and then he tries to teach uh, Young Justice or the Teen Titans, and it's like he couldn't have found anyone else, just any, just anybody else instead of the guy that makes wind, who's, who's <laughs> also a robot. Oh, is he human? And you know, is, is it the Vision? It's another problem with Tio Morrow again. Uh oh, or is it Doctor Ivo? I don't even remember. I don't know. I have no idea. Whichever one of those. <clears throat> you know who mine is? My number one overhyped? Number one? Who? Yeah. I don't know. Harley Quinn. Oh. For some reason, Harley Quinn annoys the shit out of me. <laughs> I don't know if it's the character or the fandom surrounding the character or, or just like a combination, but like I just, whatever. I'm so <laughs> whatever on Harley Quinn. Like she... <sighs> It just, I have, it's like my Firefly argument. I have no actual base or, like, reasoning behind it. <laughs> she just bothers me, and I see her everywhere. Yeah. Fucking everywhere. Yeah, she is everywhere. Yeah. So many cosplays, so mm-hmm. many books. And it's not like the cosplays are bad. Most of the cosplays are excellent. And, there's, like, you know, there's, there's so always the... versions, too. You, there's a lot of freedom to... Yeah, I mean, and there's always, you know, no two Harley Hammers are ever the same. <laughs> I think that's rad. Remember we saw the one girl at New York who was using her hammer as storage? Yeah. Um, I like a little door in it. Yeah. That was great. Brilliant. Might as well. <laughs> if you're lugging around an enormous hammer. But well, she watered up like her, her sweatshirt. And yeah. Burned. Just stuffed it in the hammer. <laughs> but um, Harley Quinn just, oh, God. I, I, I feel like she's so over <clears throat> overdone, overhyped, played out. But in the Batman world... She was the Joker's so popular, right? yeah, and who also could be right up there on the most overhyped. Mm-hmm. But there, every time I want to say like, "Oh, well, there's not a whole lot of women in the Batman universe," there are because we still have Batgirl or any of the Batgirls and Catwoman and Oracle. Still, so, well, like, do you lump her in with the Batgirls? I kind of do. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> um. Renee Montoya, Nifs got Poison Ivy and Talia Al Ghul. But like are any of those women that fans want to identify with? Or like they're because they're not as fun. The idea is that Harley Quinn is, is a lot of fun. Yeah. And she's kind of silly and ridiculous. And so She's like the Deadpool of the DC <clears throat> universe. <laughs> yeah. That's that's very true. Yeah. So like people wanna identify with the fun character. Because, like, well, Poison Ivy's kind of pissy, and Talia's not any fun to be around, and Renee seems angry. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so much uh, to do with the Joker that this is the way they could feel they could still do that with Harley. Right. I'm trying to resist calling her, like, a strong female character, because her entire existence is getting beat up by the Joker. It's an abusive relationship. More recently, in the past couple of years, you know, between different writers and artists deciding, I'm like, well, we should not have that be a thing anymore. She has to fight back and be independent without the Joker. And she has to put the Joker in his place. She's in, like, the Suicide <clears throat> Squad now and stuff. And yeah. She's, like, doing her own thing. And so, like, I get that she's not that abused person anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what she was for a long time. Um. And and people become fans of an image of a thing without being a fan of the character or, like, knowing the character. So a lot of the time I feel like sometimes it's just like, oh, this is a character that's easy to cosplay or this will be fun or I've seen other people do it and I want to do it better or you know, anything like that. Or even they, you know, they might have some experience with it but not, like, mm-hmm. in in-depth. It's like me with the Inhumans. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like, I... I'm like, oh, sweet, the, the reader's rad. I know nothing about the reader aside from, like, the 12 issues of Uncanny and Humans that mm-hmm. I've read, where he shows up once every four issues. Well, you've probably got his first appearance, so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, like, Harley goes back so long, you know. And it goes, you know, then you're getting into the argument of, you know, uh, oh, you like Harley Quinn? What's her middle name? <laughs> what's her What's her dog's uh, uh, mother's name? Well, actually, she has two hyenas, not yeah, dogs. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> it gets into the, you know, it doesn't matter how much you've read, because if you dig the character, that's all that matters. Yeah. You know? There um, might be gatekeepers that want to yeah. challenge your, your fanship. Yep. 
there always will be, especially mm-hmm. if you're a woman. Like, especially because you're not allowed to like it for some reason. I find myself asking female fans questions because I want to know how much we can talk about and if we have, what we have in common. And, like, um, so that I'm never talking down to them. It's like, are we on the same level? Because, like, I just want to have a conversation with them either way. And I'll be really psyched if they're into the same amount of stuff that I'm into. And, like, that's why I might ask questions here and there. But it's not, like, challenging. You I know, feel like I've seen you do that with do. everyone, not just necessarily women. Like, you know, <laughs> are you aware? <laughs> like, how much have you read? Because I, I, I can either talk about this on a basic level mm-hmm. or I can talk about this on an in-depth level. It's also a way to avoid spoilers. <laughs> Henry Rollins called it, calls it uh, switched on. Mm-hmm. Like, are you switched on? It's like, we right. all are. Yeah. Yeah. So, Har- okay, Harley. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I feel like I, we talked about this before. I'm all set on Batman. Like, maybe we don't need six different Batman comic books. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, we could get by with just the two. Right now we have All-Star mm-hmm. and Batman. And Detective. And Detective. And... I feel like there's one more, but I can't remember. Is there a Batman and anything? I don't know. I don't think so. I can't remember, though. I stopped. Once Rebirth happened, I dropped a lot of books. <laughs> um, like, literally, I was I was going through my file at the comic shop the other day. Like mm-hmm. I was like, oh, hey, I need to update my file because yeah. I don't read a lot of this stuff anymore. Right. The only books I have on DC right now, which DC, like, back in the day, was my go- I have them tattooed on my arm. Like, DC was my jam. Mm-hmm. I read Justice League and Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Like I'm, I don't have any interest in Flash, Batman, Wonder Woman. Like I just don't. No, nah. like I'll I'll pick up trades if I need to. He's 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 just not that cool to me. He's too perfect. Mm-hmm. But he's also way too damaged right. to, to be to be a human that could process all this stuff. <laughs> He's got so much wrong with him, but somehow makes everything perfect. And I, there's how many more stories can be told with him is part of why yeah. that. It's like you can't tell me, you can't show me a series or like a, a story arc where he spends five issues dealing with mobsters in Gotham, and then put him in outer space with the JLA, like the one of those things is way beyond the scope of the other, you know, <clears throat> they don't equal out. I mean, green arrow is better anyway. So damn. <laughs> what am I? Even the show arrow isn't really a green arrow show. It's a Batman show. They couldn't actually make Batman. So they took green arrow and made it be Batman. I mean, when you think about it, like rich vigilante. <laughs> yeah. Intense training. Mm-hmm. Stop crime with the the underworld, the the uh, the criminal. You know, like ones stay in the one city. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of superheroes do that. I guess that's unfair to yeah. to lump them in. Like literally everyone, like with Coast City and Central and. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the Al Ghul family didn't have anything to do with green arrow that's that's a, a batman thing right and like assembling his his arrow family it's literally supposed to be like arsenal and then uh mia and he's done eventually his son will throw a black canary in there but like he doesn't have a brainiac at, at a computer all the time that's that's what Batman has. Batman <laughs> has an oracle. Right. It's like I'll He has the ear. He has the voice in his ear. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver Queen doesn't need an oracle. Yeah. But the show does, I guess. So it's... essentially what you're saying is Green Arrow is better than Batman. Green Arrow would beat Batman in a fight? <laughs> nah. He wouldn't. <laughs> you know who else I have for overrated? Who's that? Um they're actually both Green Lanterns. Ooh. I know. I have a, there's a lot of Green Lantern stuff on my list because like just thinking back it's what I predominantly read. Mm-hmm. Um Simon Baz. Okay. Remember when Baz showed up? Yeah. 
oh man, he's 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 a he's a Muslim, right? whatever diversity. Yeah, and he's got but he's got a tattoo, and you know all the nerds <laughs> got their chotch all over that. He has a gun. Oh my god, he has a gun. Like I, like, I don't know. I feel like Baz came out of nowhere, and it felt like not not necessarily out of nowhere, but like it was, oh my god, a new Green Lantern, mm-hmm. new Green Lantern for Earth, and he's just boring. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. I'm just not feel like in reading the Green Lanterns book with him and Jessica Cruz. Yeah, that book just annoys the shit out of me. Even though like the current storyline with the the Phantom Lantern is pretty great, mm-hmm. I dig that shit. Yeah, when you're going into the emotional spectrum again, that's good Green Lantern shit. Yeah, I like that. But, like, they just keep referring to the same storyline with the actual Green Lanterns. Oh, my God, Jessica Cruz has an anxiety attack. Oh, my God, Simon doesn't understand at first, but then later in the issue comes to terms with the fact that he has to be gentle with Jessica. You know, like, every single issue. Oh, my God, I can finally do this. Oh, I can't do this. Then Simon, hey, Jessica, what's going on? Why are you doing this? This is happening again? And then at the end, I need to understand more. Hmm. Every issue. It's like, okay, fuck, man. So there's not much character growth. It's driving me crazy because I thought Jessica Cruz could be rad. Yeah. I was all on board when, when they made her like a like Power from Ring. Power Ring to Green Lantern. Yeah. I liked I liked her look. Mm-hmm. I thought like the fact that like you know, coming out of the shell and stuff and I guess it does make sense, you know, you, when you have anxiety and when you have that kind of stuff, like it you don't get over it. You can't escape it. It's always gonna be there. But I feel like every single issue is just the same exact thing. Hmm. But like, this one had the Phantom Lantern get away, and this one didn't. And the, but um, is she the second one, or is was it? You said you had two. For oh yeah, yeah uh, my second one. No, no, Jessica Cruz. I'm still. I'm giving it more time. Okay. Um, but uh, my second one was um, Sodom Yacht. Okay. Remember him? Yeah. Yeah. He's the. He was Ion for a while. He he's was the, the not Kryptonian, right? Yeah, he's a uh, Daxamite. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was also named. He was ranked number thirty-two on Comics Alliance fifty sexiest male characters in comics <laughs> in twenty thirteen. He does not have a defining look about him. He's he's essentially like like a Superboy yeah. looks like. Yeah. Um. I mean, like he was Ion for a while. He was just hyped up, mm-hmm. and I just remember I was reading Infinite Crisis, and like. He was oh fuck it's Ion mm-hmm. like he's Ion he's infused with Ion he's going toe to toe with Superboy Prime yeah and then like two pages later Superboy Prime's just like carrying his corpse <laughs> and it's like well that was quick and then you just don't see him again you would think he like where'd Sodom Yacht go <laughs> <laughs> was that the armored Superboy Prime yeah yeah I think I can't I, remember I feel like unarmored Sodom Yacht could stand a chance well he also it's, um, it's basically. Superman with a power ring. Right. I mean, he's not as powerful. Like, Daxum didn't have, like, the same something-something that Krypton did. I don't remember exactly what the situation was. But they absorb uh, yellow sun radiation and it makes them stronger. Right. But the whole lead thing. um, Lead is very lethal. Oh, it's lethal, right? According to Wikipedia, lead is very lethal to them. And when he was fighting Superboy Prime, they, like, crashed through a factory and there was, like, a shitload of lead and all that stuff. That was lucky. Um Due to his exposure to lead from lead shielding in a nuclear power plant and uranium stabbed into him by Superboy Prime, Yat must wear his Green Lantern ring at all times to stop the lead poisoning or he will die within a few minutes. Which is kind of a neat like character development thing. Yeah. It's like it's kinda of like Iron Man with his yeah, arc yeah. reactor. Yep, yep. <laughs> now that I think of it, I hate it because it's just a direct <laughs> ripoff of Iron Man and his arc reactor. <laughs> um but I feel like he just like as I was as I was reading it, I was like, oh my god, this guy's so badass. He's mm-hmm. beating the shit out of Superboy Prime. Nobody beats Superboy Prime. Yeah. And then, like, two pages later, he was almost dead. Does he have a partner? Who's his point, too? I can't remember. Hmm. What hmm. Do, you, do you have any anything else for overhyped? Uh, it's my beer problem. <laughs> the Falcon. The Falcon. Falcon has no place with Cap's shield. He's- oh, okay. I, I was thinking the Vulture. Nope. I was like, Spider-Man? Nah. <laughs> I mean, Sam Wilson is cool. The Falcon is cool. His parts in the movies are really neat. Yep. But as far as comics go, I don't think he should have the shield. He shouldn't be Captain America. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who should? Bucky? Yeah, I would give it to Bucky over him, yeah. Would you say that that's been done, though? 
Yeah. But like it, it was done, but I don't see why. When, I, but you <laughs> liked it when it was done. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Bucky could use a shield effectively because he would throw it with his cyber arm. <laughs> Where it's like, now we have Captain America who could fly. Yeah. But, but it's like, well, what else does he have? I mean, I get that he's still really patriotic. He's he's best friends with Cap, and and I'm okay with all that. But. <clears throat> Who would you give the shield to? Would you just uh, give it to Bucky? Get to Zemo. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Zemo would make a great Captain America. <laughs> there, I don't know which what issue it was in. There was a point where, um, for some reason, momentarily, Sam Wilson and uh, Jane Foster Thor like kiss, mm-hmm. and someone's like, "How was it?" <laughs> and he's like, it "Tastes like a goddess." Someone asked her, she's like, tastes like freedom. <laughs> <laughs> My joke wasn't going to be nearly as funny. I was just going to make the Watchmen reference. It's like putting your tongue on a nine bowl. <laughs> um, also, Red Skull's overhyped. He's the last just... I saw Red Skull, he had Xavier's brain, and then it just kind of fizzled. I don't even know what happened with that. Yeah, me neither. And like, I've been reading a bunch of Uncanny Avengers and he, it, th- th- that was part of the storyline. I was like, oh, where is he now? I'm not sure. I don't know. He's cool in Old Man Logan, <clears throat> which you should fucking read. <laughs> Didn't I? Sh- I sent you I know, a picture. We, we talked about this. Apparently, there's one more issue that's like an annual somewhere else, not within the issues that I collected. Unbelievable. I got the single. You didn't tell me. <laughs> I didn't know. I've only read the trade. It's <laughs> a lot. For, for like years, Jared's been telling me I have to read Old Man Logan. I like the, Logan the original, a lot. and so I finally did because I got every issue in its run of Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like in the late seventies to early eighty, I think. <clears throat> and not I the get, year, the, right? The actual it, issue, issue numbers. numbers. Yeah, and I get to the end, and it's like, so this ends in annuals or some other. Because I didn't want to read any of it until I had all of them, right? And I didn't know there was one more, so. That's a pain. Me neither. I have to go what have you that. read up to? What's happened in it? Uh, he went to Red Skull's house. Right. And was smashing everything. Yep. <clears throat> Had a lot of claws. There was claws happening. So he was with Hawkeye and stuff. Was it Hawkeye? Um, well. Yeah. It's Blind for, Hawkeye. For a while. For a while. Yeah. <laughs> Block Eye. I just liked all the, like, as they were on their journey, I loved the, like, Mm-hmm. You know, they pass by Hammer Falls, mm-hmm. like, and you just see Thor's hammer sitting there because, like, no one, but it's like, what happened? What happened to Thor? Where is Thor? They have to, like, go rescue uh, Hawkeye's daughter. Yep. But she's, like, wearing the Spider-Man outfit and stuff. Yeah. That was, that was, that was intense. That was neat. This is just, like, giant man's fucking enormous <laughs> corpse. corpse just laying, like, <laughs> and, like, I just, I want to know more about that world. I like that world a lot. Anyways. You, you've been telling me about uh, Mysterio. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Mysterio. I don't know if I would make fun of him just on purpose because secretly, like, I do kind of dig Mysterio. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say something about him just to be silly. And you were like, yo, you read Old Man Logan yet? <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, as I get it now? <laughs> <laughs> as I was reading it, like, I could kind of predict what was what, what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was really powerful it was brutal it was br- <laughs> especially like reading it the first time i was like oh my god he's just ripping these guys faces and yeah then, like was it like bullseye I was like why are you doing this <laughs> yeah his, his fight was last one was bullseye and it took like 40 minutes to- <laughs> yeah and it turns out it was jubilee i think it was psylocke psylocke i can't remember because jubilee couldn't put up a fight for that long yeah you never know not against wolverine i'm surprised mysterio went on his own he didn't like drink some backup just in case anyway <sighs> what a badass um, are we still on overhyped? We're, this is taking a lot longer than I expected. I was like, oh, this will be like a 45 minute episode. It'll be a short one. What else you got for overhyped? Uh, th- that's what I have for overhyped. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had a quick list of characters I want to see more of, and we've actually touched on two of them. <laughs> Larflees is one. Yep. Larflees is one for me. I had Saint Walker. Does he have his ring on yet? Has he gotten his ring back? Remember when it was just floating there? Yeah. Because he didn't have any hope? I'll have to update. I can't remember. You on that? I think I th- he did. He- he he's in Sinestro. Is he? Because okay. it was one of those really cool things Sinestro does, where 
you kind of see him prepare for something and then it gets ignored and forgotten for like two issues. And then like shit's going down and there's a big fight and everyone's like, Snesser, do something. And he's like, in time, I'll get to it. And they're like, we're losing the fight. And so she's like, give it a minute. <laughs> <clears throat> and then like on the last page, Snesser reveals like he's been building more Manhunters mm-hmm. and they all swarm out to join the battle. <clears throat> and they're also, the Manhunters are also yellow pa- power batteries. Mm-hmm. They had that kind of moment where, like, Snuster kidnaps St. Walker. And he's like, hey, you uh, power up Green Lanterns, huh? And Walker's like, well, when I'm a Blue Lantern, I can do that. And he's like, all right, cool. You're going to do that for yellow now. And Walker's like, I can only do that for green. And so she's like, you better learn. <laughs> so there's a point where there's a fight. There's a big battle going on. And, like, uh-huh. Sinestro Corps is losing. And they're all getting beat. And Sinestro, like, unleashes St. Walker. And he comes out. And all the yellow rings are powered up. And it worked. That's, I don't know if I like that because like it the was whole... it was a really cool reveal, right? I mean, I want to I want to read that because like they they took in um, an alien that can like dissect a body, but like they're still alive, mm-hmm. so it completely separates them down to bone and nervous system and musculature and everything. And so they were like, "You're going to be one of our new doctors, and you're going to work with Doctor So and So." And he's and he's like, "But I don't know if I know how to do that." And like you're gonna learn, <laughs> and so one of the things was like him and this other guy were gonna go to work on Saint Walker, right? And make him his blue ring power up yellow rings. Because like the reason it always worked with Green Lanterns was, what was it? Because there's no, there is no will without hope, or is it? There's no hope without will. I can't remember. It's one of those. Yeah, yeah. but that's the reason why the blues would power up the greens. Because right. essentially the blues like. They can protect themselves and fly, mm-hmm. but they can't do a whole lot. But well, they like can't it, make constructs without the greens, right? Yeah. But when the greens are around, like they're they're fucking badass. Yeah. I yeah. love the blue lanterns, and I <laughs> wish that they weren't just like cast off and killed. A bunch of them were killed. Mm-hmm. Was that Rise of the Third Army? I think killed a bunch of them. It was actually the Reach. The Reach. The Blue Beetle Army. I don't remember that. Yep. Huh. Anyways. <clears throat> um, who do you want to see more of? Uh, Lara Flues was one. I want an Alan Alien solo book. <laughs> Before Invincible I, Ends. I want to see all kinds of stuff about Alan Alien. He just seems like a lot of fun. What Like Before Invincible? Yeah. Yeah. He'd be really fun. Or what? Yeah. he's I, That character's so good. I could always use more Grendel. Mm-hmm. I like Grendel and Matt Wagner's litany of characters and um i would like somehow if jenny sparks could come back who's that jenny sparks is from uh the authority and it was one of the wild storm books mm-hmm. and it was like a, a a team that's that's um it's like an extreme like adult version of the justice league who does that book it's not millar is it i think it is because at some point, I think Miller made it to make fun of Grant Morrison because they don't like each other. <laughs> okay, fair. <laughs> Warren so, Ellis. Yes, thank you. Yep. So there's, or that was one of them. I don't know if he created it. it says it was created by Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. Okay, that makes more sense. Thank you. <laughs> there was that and there was Stormwatch. And so Jenny Sparks was like one of these amazing uh, millennial powers. Mm-hmm. And she lives for 100 years. And she had electric powers because that's what was the hot new thing when she was born in May at the beginning of the 20th century. So then eventually when she died, when the 21st century came around, they're like, well, we need a new power thing. What's it going to be? And that's when Jenny Quantum showed up. But Jenny Quantum isn't, she's still a kid or a teenager. It's a cool name. Which Jenny, Jenny Quantum? Yeah. That's a rad name. I'm and, sorry. And so like a lot of the books had like leading up to her growing up and she had my two dads. Because Apollo and Midnighter were her gay parents. Mm-hmm. And they did some neat things with her. But then at the same time, they tried to age her too fast. They could include her more stories. And different people would attack and be like, so you've got us fighting someone who looks like she could be, you know, in her 20s. But mentally, she's about six. Right. <laughs> You're going to put her against us? So we do stupid. And I really like the attitude that Jenny had and the experience that she had and there's a lot of like wit and knowledge within the character and like it really affected her, her personality. 
It's almost like put like if you made John Constantine like a, a blonde chick. Mm-hmm. It was it was kind of like that. Right. Yeah. But you know she she was the last hundred years, not the current hundred years. Of course. So of course. I don't know how they would do that. <clears throat> My last one for see more of. I miss Superboy Prime. I'm that one guy. <laughs> he was such a piece of shit, <laughs> and like. There's probably it's probably on record on this show of me saying I hate Superboy Prime and he keeps showing up and I wish they would get rid of him but uh-huh. like I kind of miss him. He's a babbling idiot and his stutter. Yeah, his <laughs> stupid little stutter like he would just show up in Wreck House for like but they got super meta with it. Mm-hmm. And like they put him in like the real world and he was reading the comics that he was in. Yeah. Yeah. And it got super People hate the fact that he was able to punch reality anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he was just strong as shit. But I de- like even you know throughout the Snester Wars and everything, and the concept of like giving him the Anti Monitor's power armor yeah. was amazing. I was like, oh, that's so cool. He looks like the Anti Monitor. He needs his armor to power him up and everything. It feeds him it's yellow sunlight, own- <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that is frightening. Like just imagine. Like remember Sinestro's gang back then. Mm-hmm. He had Superboy Prime. He had a he had a yellow ring on the Anti Monitor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he also had uh, Cyborg Superman. Yeah, Arkillo. Yep. Not to mention all the other horrifying Crib. Remember Crib? <laughs> I do. Oh my God, Crib. <laughs> I feel and like I know I got into comics late, but I'm like I feel bad for people who's just getting into them now. <laughs> Go back and read that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And like. It pains me to think that there might be people who are like, oh, that's just old. I don't want to read that. That's garbage. That's Because like, I read old stuff. I'm like, oh, it's too wordy. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like, I don't want to read a novel. I want to read a comic book. Right. Yeah. I don't want to be the old comic book guy. <laughs> Comics nowadays. Yep. Someone uh, pointed out they're going to bring back uh, the biker Lobo. And get rid of what they call Twilight Lobo. Twilight Lobo. Or Lipstick yeah. Lobo. Yeah. <clears throat> and I still want to point out that Lobo in the in the late 70s and early 80s, he didn't look that much different from Twilight Lobo. Mm-hmm. Like, he wore Biker Lobo's clothes, but he wasn't huge and rippling and have, like, you know, uncombed crazy hair. Like, he, he was wearing a ponytail. Right. And his features, like, weren't quite so outrageous. He looked like a. He could have joined like a, a badass boy band. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been the 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 you know the the future drug abuser. <laughs> this is always the one. <laughs> so what we got with Twilight Lobo really wasn't that all that far off from what Lobo like was a little ways after his first appearance. <clears throat> um, you know what I could use less of in comics, events. <laughs> well, yeah, you just go from one event to the next event to the next event. That gives you no time to actually develop a character. Mm-hmm. I think Wasada gave Marvel one year where he was like, you know what? Just develop your books and develop your characters. Just tr- tell good, plot-driven character stories. And then, and then it's like, crossover time! <laughs> Big event books! Yay! There's always, in it, like, even right now, there's Justice League versus Suicide Squad going on. Mm-hmm. There's also um, Inhumans vs X Men. Inhumans vs X Men. There's Shi'ar vs uh, um, Asgardians. Hmm. They hate. It. They're mad at each other. Do they have its own, its own title yet, or are they just? Within I don't think the... it's. I think it's within the Thor book. Okay, but there's um. What else but, is there? So the, so sometimes when it's a smaller crossover, I'm okay with it. Okay, because now but when it gets its own book, like when, Blackest Night. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but Blackest Night was really good. Oh, no, I'm not saying... I'm just using it as an example. <laughs> it's, like, as but, a, like, we don't need one every season. Right. I would like to have, like, one a year, maybe. Like, you know, give us a summer crossover. But give us, like, the other nine months to actually tell stories within the books. Because, like, a writer and an artist might have a plan what they're going to do with the character. And then they get told, hey, hey, now uh, half your characters are become Deadpool. So write that. Yep. It's like, but I had a direction I was going in. Yeah, but it's a Deadpool crossover now, so we're, that's what we're doing. I think that's why <laughs> Justice League was so bad for a couple months there. Because I think it was like, oh, hey, by the way, starting in, like, January, 
there's going to be the Justice League versus Suicide Squad thing. So you got to like, don't make any storylines that are going to go too long. You're yeah. going to have this weird disjointed one with like these giant god people, and then you're going to have one random one with Max Lord, and then you're going to start in with like, you make, know, make make two filler issues. Yep. Hang on, there's a delay. Make three filler issues. <laughs> yep. This is exactly what it is, and you like it, it and then it cuts into the main storyline, and mm-hmm. which normally like. I don't know. I'm just not interested in Justice League versus Suicide Squad. I'm mm-hmm. just that doesn't intrigue me. Same um, thing with um with Convergence. No, oh, thank you. But like what you're talking about with uh, the Shi'ar versus Asgard, like that's still that's just that's, in the Thor but book. That's contained within the book, right? So it's a way to keep the Shi'ar relevant in the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we wouldn't hear about them. Yeah, that's you're right. That it is different. And, and so when uh, the House of M stuff was going on, we were getting some Inhuman stuff. Because Quicksilver was still infected, uh, affecting the Inhumans. So we got six issues, six issues of Silent War or Son of M. Um, and so that was a way to include other characters and other stories that, like, we just would be in limbo for a while. It's why people are, like, surprised when, like, oh, there's a Cloak and Dagger book? Why? Right. It's like, well, what else have you known them to be doing for the past three years? They're in Maximum Carnage. <laughs> They're one of the helpers that show up. But, you know, for for smaller crossovers that don't affect you know ten other titles like mm-hmm. like Fear itself or or Secret Invasion or whatever like it gives you an opportunity to see what else is going on yeah. and so that I'm okay with because mm-hmm. because there are some fans of characters that want to see them expand and grow but they're not going to sell enough issues to merit its own book so they got to shoehorn them into something else or give them an event to be relevant in. Alex, I had a good time talking about comics with you. Remember when I was like, this will be like a 45-minute short one. <laughs> now we're 11 minutes over. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Classic OMV. Throwback. Classic. It's Throwback Saturday. It's okay. I've already got a guest lineup for next week. I know. Should be fun. Should be a fun one. Yeah. Should be a good time. So um, we're going to end it for now. And then next week, we'll have another one for you. Featuring someone. (laughs) (laughs) Tell him tired. Alex, this is fun. Let's do it again sometime, yeah? Okay. All right. Maybe next week? Totally. Okay. So until then, I was JR. I'm Alex. And this has been episode 253, the throwback of Opinions May Vary. We did the podcast. Yay. (laughs)